everyone, it is Evan here from the Trade Risk on Tuesday, October 22nd, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to dive right into our dashboard here. You can see it was a pretty muted day for the market, although the NASDAQ 100 clearly uh, uh, underperforming here today, down 1%. And I think what's interesting is if we look at the five-day change numbers, just the last week of trade trading, take a look at the spread between the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ 100. The Russell 2000 up almost 2% over the past five days. The Q's down 1.17%. So there's a, a good amount of... Um, maybe uncertainty or really just divided uh, leadership and underperformance going on here in the market. We saw it today uh, with technology, the cues, uh, specifically those high growers, those those software names, and a lot of the real poster childs, the things that are up huge uh, throughout the first half um, of this year are now starting to or continuing to sort of pull back and really not catch the bid here. Most times in recent history, when we're looking at some of these names that have been selling off, uh, they would have rebounded by now and they would have probably been off of off to making new highs. This time's a little bit different. We're seeing a little more hesitation, a little more reluctance and a little more persistent selling in some of these high growth names. And it's going to be very interesting to see um, how earnings season and, and some of the reaction to some of these high PE, these high growth flyers, um, you know, really get through this this quarter's earnings. Uh, are we, you know, sort of uh, overstretched here on the selling or is this selling justified and sort of indicative of what's to come uh, when they report earnings? I think those are uh, good, good, good sort of um, outside of uh, just looking at charts, but some interesting things to think about um, as we go through earnings season right now. All in all, with that aside, you know, we have seen with the Russell 2000, there are other groups that are picking up the slack. I'm looking at uh, particularly financials, which are doing quite well right now, which are helping um, kind of stabilize things. A little bit of rebound in energy, uh, but still that's, you know, um, tough overall on the year. Uh, but it is a split market out there. We are, though, however, still above the 1050, 200 SMA across all the major indices. When we take a look at what's been working, uh, we are seeing, that's right, biotech is some the small cap leadership as well has been working. Uh, transports, utilities, top three uh, for five-day performance. On the downside, it's tech, it's semis, and it is builders uh, or materials. When we look at major markets here, we get a little bit of a pop in the VIX. Uh, it had sold off quite a bit over uh, the past 10 or so days, a little bit of, um, you know, move back into the VIX. Otherwise, uh, USO and emerging markets rounding out the top three. And on the downside, natural gas continues to uh, struggle to stabilize along with the US dollar and TLT. So let's jump into the charts here. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. And we're really in this market where we're taking kind of two steps forward, one step back over and over again. We're really just sort of grinding and trying to sort of get back up to the upper end of this range, get back up to these prior all-time highs. You can see all the tails that are coming in on the upper end, these wicks uh, at the top of these weekly candles over the past, uh, quite frankly, look at all of them uh, over the past six weeks here. You can see there's just been a reluctance to close at the highs of a week to really just have a Friday session that closes us strong. We continue to just pull off here and just, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, kind of grind over these recent weeks, uh, mostly lackluster trend. But over the past three weeks, of course, trying to stabilize and push up here. We talked about the failure to, um, you know, push above the prior week's highs in last weekend's video. You can see maybe we're repeating ourselves again, uh, you know, for the third week in a row. Uh, it is early yet. It is only Tuesday. There's plenty of earnings and things to get through this week. But right now we are. Uh, despite the, you know, perhaps negative tone or just the um, uncertainty in the picture that I'm painting here, we are still up. We are still higher here for the S&P 500. 50 basis points. And we are basically uh, stuck in this range here. We're arguably still consolidating sideways ever since topping out in July here at these all time highs. We've pulled back. We've tried to retest the highs. We've pulled back. And now we're again on the on the route to retest the highs. But we've essentially gone absolutely nowhere for four months here. And you could even arguably take that back even further and say, you know, we're not all that further up uh, than where we were even a year ago. 
uh, when we topped out in uh, late 2018 uh, in the September months, August months. So S&P 500 bulls still have the trend at their favor, uh, you know, in the, at least in the short term. Uh, but momentum here is a little bit waning. And, and really, we're just waiting to see if this market can retest, get back up to these prior highs and eventually get the strength to push through them. We are in earnings season. So this is a reasonable catalyst to get that done. Uh, we just need to see if that's the actual route. If we do start to sell off, if we are going to see, you know, perhaps some of these high growth flyers are the canary in the coal mine right now, and the market is in store for uh, a more of a pullback, more of a widespread pullback in, say, the S&P 500 and other major indices, then we want to be paying attention to prior week's lows. And more importantly, in, in terms of horizontal resistance or support, I'm looking at 2950. That's been sort of the bellwether benchmark uh, area that I've been looking at as an upper level line in the sand. Uh, and so far, um, you know, we, we continue to hold above it but it is only uh, less than 2% away. So if you're a real active sort of shorter term trader, uh, that's an interesting level to start to use or to look or to pay attention to. And on the upside, of course, we're less than 1% away from all time highs. So something has got to give here eventually. We just don't know if there's going to be more weeks of chop uh, before that actually happens. I suspect we're going to need a little more out of earnings season to perhaps get uh, that catalyst going in either direction. If we look at the Russell 2000, here is where some of the bright spot is actually coming from, which is a weird thing to say because for the longest time, the Russell 2000 has always been the dud here uh, for the past, you know, basically year and a half. It's all been the S&P 500, the Dow, the Qs been trying to lead us higher and the Russell has been fairly stagnant. But now you can see that we have been rallying here. It has been on lighter volume, but we're working ourselves back up into sort of the middle upper range. Uh, or end of this long range that we've been in uh, for over a year now. We're still structurally in the same spot we've been in, uh, even despite this nice, um, you know, 10-day rally that has occurred. We really need to get more energy to get to the top end and eventually get a breakout over 159, 160. We're a good ways away from it right now, but the trend is up. And this is actually, again, where some of that leadership and rotation is happening is biotech, is financial, some select energy stocks. And that's what's helping move the Russell 2000 right now. So the trend is up here in the short term. Uh, we'll see if this can continue to hold things up. We are going to need some more broad based support. I don't think it's the Russell alone that can do the heavy lifting here. But so far, it is keeping us uh, looking fine on the surface uh, with the rally that we're seeing in the Russell 2000. Now, if we go to the Q's. You can see here that uh, we, again, aren't too far off of all-time highs, uh, but we're still kind of stagnating. We're sluggish here. We're finding uh, some hesitation exactly where we rallied to in early to mid-September, right in this 194 area before starting the pullback uh, throughout the course of September. We got the rebound. We're back up here, and we're sort of uh, kind of meandering once again. And in fact, you can see there's a little bit of, uh, of course, it's super early. I'm recording this 20 minutes after the market, but earnings are out. This 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 afternoon, um, and you can see there's a little bit of already a gap down occurring here. Again, long way away from tomorrow, uh, but it's interesting to again just get some of the action going on here and the reactions from earnings and how it's going to start impacting some of uh, the major indices here. There is an open gap right now, so it's bull's best interest to keep this open and defended. Uh, but it seems likely if this gap, you know, if we are going to start to probe lower here, if we are going to start to pull back, uh, that's a reasonable first target at least is to just get that filled up and retested and see what kind of uh, support comes in around that 189 area. So NASDAQ 100, that's what we're looking at there. Still very similar to the S&P 500. We're really close to all-time highs, but momentum is clearly waning here and we have still yet to break out, mostly still going sideways. If we go to the TLT here and take a look at some other major markets, you can see TLT on the week is basically sideways. It started the week off a little bit lower, rebounded a bit today, but on 
honestly, not much has changed here structurally, still overall sideways and consolidating. Gold, absolutely the same thing. You can see very, very tight here. Interesting to see just how tight gold has gotten. It still looks pretty healthy when you zoom out here and just take a look at the big run up that it had in June, July, and August. And then you look at just this, um, you know, a lot of this consolidation, mostly through time, fairly shallow pullback as of now, uh, which could turn into a nice continuation pattern. Again, don't want to make predictions, just want to keep an open mind. For now, gold just needs some more time before that breakout occurs. Silver, pretty much the same thing. Uh, it is still consolidating, trendless here. It's getting tight in recent trading. You can see mostly sideways uh, for the past three weeks, a lot of overlapping bars, uh, but we still need to wait for that catalyst. USO uh, starting to break here, or trying to break here to the upside. We talked about this in our last video. We had this little series of kind of lower highs and higher lows getting built out here in USO is at the bottom end of a range. We do have some MACD that's trying to push higher here. So uh, if we, the bulls can get some follow through tomorrow over 1150, looks like this could start to lift higher here, work itself back up into the range, into the upper end of this range. Natural gas, on the other hand, we talked about, um, you know, on Friday, how it was looking kind of interesting right in here. We saw all the volume that started to pull in here above average. Uh, it had this nice close to the week here, just looking like it wanted to pop higher. And then, of course, the exact opposite happened. It started the week off with a gap down, and then it went sideways here today. So natural gas still, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, playing, um, you know, uh, two-way trading right now. There's lots of volume coming in with the 20-day average on the rise right now. So that is interesting. Lots of volume coming in at potential turning points is always the, uh, the saying and the hallmark for clues as to where... Um, you know, what price is up to. So we have to keep an eye on this. I do like the potential longer term uh, positive momentum divergence at these levels. But of course, when we look at the, the bigger picture here, natural gas is a total mess in terms of all of its longer term trends are totally are just right down uh, and to the right. So you have to be cautious here, but uh, natural gas still going to keep an eye on it. Uh, if we can start to resolve over $20 again, the sideways range, then maybe we have a nice little tactical trade there. Uh, but until, you know, until and if that happens, uh, I think, uh, you know, we have to just play it safe and, um, you know, stay sidelined or just wait for more information. At least that's my perspective. So that's it. That's what I got for this week's midweek video. Thanks, as always, for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel every Tuesday and Friday for market recaps just like this or head on over to thetraderist.com. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you tomorrow for our trade ideas video.